Pre-Calc, this is chapter 4.3, day 2. So we're going to continue on. Today we're actually going to get into the unit circle. We're going to build it so you at least guys know where things are coming from, how you're going to get some of your answers, and um, some of those types of questions. The first thing up here is actually the quadrants. As you can see, we got quadrants 1, 2, 3, 4. And if you're looking at that, they go counterclockwise. We should know that. But then you should also notice that they have some signs in here. And so if you notice that if we're talking about the sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta, all three of them are going to be positive in the first quadrant. In quadrant two, only sine is positive. The other two are negative ratios. You can think of this because if I put this on an xy plane, if cosine's the x value, if I go to the right, x is positive. If I go to the left, x is negative. Notice cosine, which is negative back here, because it's, again, backwards. Cosine in the fourth quadrant is positive because I went forward. Sine is that y value, and therefore, where sine goes up, quadrants 1 and 2, it's positive. Where I go down, sine is negative. And remember the connection that tangent theta is equal to what again? We talked about this yesterday. Sine of theta over cosine theta. And when you divide a positive by a positive, it is Positive. You divide a negative by a negative, it is positive. positive. You divide a positive by a negative, or a negative by a positive, you still get negatives. So that's why tangent is positive, because positive divided by positive is positive. Sine, positive, cosine, negative. When you divide those two, you get a negative. Negative, negative makes a positive. And a negative divided by positive is also negative. So there's got to be a better way to remember that which ones are positive, which ones are negative. I mean, you, can, you can remember them as x's and y's. That would help out tremendously. But I propose that you use the saying, all schools torture children. All schools torture children, or all students take calculus, there's another one. So the A is for all, S is for school, T, uh, torture or take, C is calculus or children. But really what it stands for is the fact that that's the letter of the trig function that is positive. So the A1, there's no A trig function. That means all. So actually all stands for all. S would stand for the sine function. The sine function is the only positive one. T, tangent, because the negative divided by negative. And quadrant four is C, cosine. Cosine is the only positive function in that section. Now it's important because not only do we have this idea that tangent theta is equal to sine over cosine, we also had um, our reference triangles. We talked about that, I don't think yesterday, but the day before. And those two reference triangles are to be made the exact same way every single time. And then we can move them, change them, however we would like. On a 30, 60, 90, what's opposite 30? It's 1. Opposite 90? And opposite 60? Square root of 3. So if you can make those, it's awesome. And then the 45, 45, 1, 1, square root of 2. Because you're going to need to know those, potentially, to do A and B down here. Maybe, maybe not. But when we're going to evaluate functions, we could. Actually, I don't think we're going to need that for A and B. Thinking about it now. 
it gives us one function. It wants you to find the other six. Now, we've done this before. We have done this, but they never told you anything about those other three quadrants. Now, they're giving you the secant theta is equal to the square root of three. But then they're saying that the other limitation is that tangent theta has to be less than zero, a.k.a. negative. So if I'm looking here, where is tangent negative, that has to be in quadrant two or in quadrant four. So right now, I'm either going to be drawing an angle in one of those two quadrants. What the other key is is the fact that the secant is positive. It's the square root of three. But wait a minute, I don't like secant. Secant actually will change into what? 1 over cosine. It's really just a cosine in disguise. And if that's true, even if I take the reciprocal now of both sides, I'm sorry you guys can't see it on the screen, that means that cosine theta is equal to 1 over the square root of 3. Cosine is positive. In which other quadrant do we have cosine positive and tangent negative? If you're looking at your signs, it's either 2 or 4. Up in 2, cosine is negative. Down here, cosine is positive. So I want it to be positive and tangent negative. We're in quadrant 4. So this is where my triangle is. I don't know what theta is. Maybe we can figure it out. But does everybody see why we chose to be in quadrant four? Cosine had to be positive, but tangent was negative. I am now going to use that cosine theta on that triangle. If it's a cosine, that means one over the square root of three is the sides with the ratio of what? What side ratios? What's cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So, ka toa. So that means it's one square root of three. To solve for the remaining six, actually you only need the remaining four because you already have two of them, don't you? You have secant and you have cosine. You just need to put the other four down. Well, you should list them all, but you only have to find four more. I just see it to use Pythagorean's theorem. So 1 squared plus y squared equals square root of 3 squared. Why would I choose y instead of x? Why would I choose y instead of x, guys? Yeah, I'm trying to find the y value. It's going down. So therefore, it's a y value. 1 squared equals 3, or y squared equals 2, or y equals the square root of 2. Now, we technically should be putting a plus or minus because we're solving for a variable. Distances themselves will never be negative, but in this case it is negative because it's going down. So that means this side length is a negative square root of 2. I now have all three sides. I have a theta. Now you can do the sine, cosine, tangent. Take the reciprocals to find the little 3. We've done that several times, right? So I quickly jotted down... The 6, I filled in secant, square root of 3, and the cosine, 1 over square root of 3, because we already established those. We just need to do sine and tangent, and then take the reciprocals. Sine of theta is? Is what? Square root of 2 over the square root of 3. Notice I'm not even going to fix these. 
You guys can fix them if you want. Ooh, it is a negative, yes. Thank you. It's a negative square root of 2 over square root of 3. And when I flip that, it'd be square root of 3 over a negative square root of 2. Again, that negative could go to the top and bottom, so it doesn't matter on a fraction. Tangent, negative square root of 2 over 1, or negative 1 over square root of 2 is the reciprocal. I want you guys to use that information, what we just did there, to try B on your own. So as you guys are working on this, what quadrant will be in? One, two, three, four, five. What quadrant? By looking at this, you know Sine has to be positive, and tangent, cotangent, which really means tangent, right, has to be positive. So where is sine positive and tangent positive? First quadrant. So we are in the first quadrant. So we are here. Sinel, can you put your ratios on? It's a sine ratio. That means what? What's 5? Opposite. 7 goes. Hypotenuse. <clears throat> Working your magic using Pythagorean's theorem. 7 squared minus 5 squared. 49 minus 25 is 24. So therefore, square root, square root of 24. Is that supposed to be a positive or a negative? It's supposed to be a positive. And then now we just have to figure out the ratios. We're given one. We didn't actually solve for the other one right away, the reciprocal, because sine is one of the big three. I liked it. Didn't want to deal with it any other way. So that's 5 sevenths, but it's real easy to find the cosecant because the cosecant is the reciprocal, or 7 fifths. Cosine of this thing is square root of 24 over 7. So it becomes 7 over square root of 24. Again, you would fix that on your own. Tangent. tangent would be 5 over square root of 24 or square root of 24 over 5. How come none of these are negative? Because we're all in quadrant 1 and everything in quadrant 1 is positive. Positive, positive, positive. Are there any questions on this, guys? This is using the fact that in particular quadrants, things are positive or negative. And of course, if sine's positive, so is cosecant positive. If cosine's positive, secant's positive, and vice versa, okay? So you have to know those types of things. All students take calculus, all schools torture children. However you want to do that, same order as your quadrants. Now we're going to get into the unit circle. The unit circle, guys, it's a circle with a radius 1 centered at the origin. So R, just like in the very first slide of yesterday, we talked about how to find or those quadrantal angles. Maybe it was the second slide. Um, and how it was 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, or 0, negative 1, or R, sorry. Now we're going to concrete it all down to 1s. The biggest number you can have for a sine or a cosine is 1, and the smallest number is negative 1. Tangent's different because you're doing that fractional, you're doing that dividing, so therefore um, you could end up with numbers that are larger or smaller than 1 and negative 1. So you can let T be any real number on a number line and P, X, Y, the point X, Y, be the point on T when the number line is wrapped around into the unit circle. 
then the trig functions are as follows. I'm not really happy about necessarily trying to say that, but what they're trying to show is that, again, those ratios still exist. Notice that now they're telling you this. This is why I left this on here. Y is equal to the sine of T, sine theta. Cosine theta is equal to X. And if you wanted to even go as far as um, tangent, tangent is Y over X, a.k.a. sine over cosine. So a lot of the times when we talk about the unit circle, and the unit circle that we're going to build today does not have tangent on there. You need to know that tangent is just sine divided by cosine. You can find those things easily. So on the next slide, I have a blank unit circle. I'm going to pause and hand everybody out a blank unit circle. Now on that next slide, we are going to have the unit circle. There it is. It's in, it's in front of you. But I want to um, talk about not just how to fill this in or give you a copy of this and say, here it is, this is how you use it. I want you guys to kind of understand where these things are coming from. Why is this circle work? How did you get your answers? How did you know that this angle is associated with this point? And so we're going to build this. And to build this, we need to know, again, those two reference triangles that we wrote two back on the slides. So on your paper someplace in your notes, I want you to readily have those two um, reference triangles. And again, I will put them here. This one looks more like a 45. So 1, 1, square root of 2. Yes? And we have this one here at 30, 60, 1, 2, square root of 3. The thing is, is that I wanted to use these two triangles. But to use these triangles, I can't use them here because this circle is the unit circle, and the unit circle has a radius of what? Again, it's 1. Right now, the hypotenuse on both of these are not 1. So here's a really cool thing about triangles. What I do to one side for multiplying and dividing, if I do that to the other two, it still works out similar triangles. So what we need to do then to make this work is I need to go through and I need to divide by whatever that radius is. Square root of 2 divided by square root of 2 is 1. It works. So therefore I get 1 over square root of 2. I don't like 1 over square root of 2. Right away I'm going to fix that. What would that be? Square root of 2 over 2's. So when I use the reference triangle today for a 45 degree angle, we are actually going to use square root of 2 over 2, 1, and square root of 2 over 2. So if you want, you could redraw this. I'm just going to take these away and write them in as 1, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. That's the triangle we're going to use. Now, I can do the same thing with this triangle below with the 36, 90. I need to divide all three sides by what? Two. Two, two, two. two. And I think the only part there that I would need to clean up is two divided by two, which is one. So now, the radius, or radii, for both of those triangles is 1. That means that it matches the radius of these. Now, the unit circle is only made up of these angles, 30, 60, and 45, and then 90s. That's all you need to know. If you know those four, then you're golden. You're good to go. Now, what I'm going to do for the first one is I'm going to take this triangle. I'm going to turn it and lay this point at the origin. So when I do this, 
I'm going to try keeping it some colors on here. I am going to create this triangle. This triangle is going to be a 30, 90, 60 triangle. So that means when I move to this spot, I put it as 30. That's a 30 degree angle. And if I put my side lengths in here, according to my new triangles, isn't this one half? This is one, and this is a square root of three over two. You know how nicely that triangle fits? So the question is, if I had to get to this point right here, what would I have to move? What's the point? How far over? How far up? Here we go. How far over am I going? How far over do I go? The number is right there, guys. How far up do I go? I go up one half. So I can fill that in. How far over did I go? We're filling it in now. Yep. It's a square root of 3 over 2. I'm using that as a fraction bar, those lines. So all I did was I superimposed the 30, 60, 90 triangle and used its side ratios to understand that if I went 30 degrees, I'd have an xy point on the circle at square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. What do you think the next angle is? 45. It's a 45. I'm going to take all of this away. You guys can leave yours there. I just don't have enough room. I'll change the colors. We'll go to some blue. Yeah, this is going to be a 45, 90. So we got a 45 degree angle. Lower the side ratios on this thing. <coughs> the radius is always one. So if I go up here, the other two sides are square root of two over two. Square root of two over two. Square root of two over two. So that means I went over and up how far? Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. The, tri the, the circle is being built using our reference triangles. Take away this. And move to the next one, right? The next one is probably what? <coughs> 60. That means if it's 60 down here, that's a 60 here, because it's just 30 inside. What was the ratios on this again? 1 is the hypotenuse. That's an easy one. What's opposite the 30 now? 1 half, and the other side is square root of 3 over 2. So what's the point? One half square root of three over two. Mine's not staying inside the boxes very well. My bad. You guys seeing that? How I'm just placing the 60, 30, and 45 degree triangles in there and using their sides to tell us what it should be. The last one would be my last.
last one here, the next one I should say, is what kind of angle? 90. Wait a minute, we don't have a 90 degree triangle. We talked about that yesterday. What should that point be? It should be 0, 1. There is no triangle. 1. Now, we're missing something. Well, maybe we should go to the bottom here. If I go straight to the right, how far over is that? One it's 1, 0. How many degrees? Zero. Zero degrees. What we're missing on here is all the radian stuff. Zero degrees is the same as how many radians? Zero. Zero radians. What was 30 degrees? If you need to, you got to convert that, but we hopefully should know these. Pi over 6. It's pi over 6. Forty-five goes into pi how many times? How many times does it go into 180? Four. Four times. Sixty. Wait a minute. Sixty, isn't that just two of the thirties? So what's two times pi over six? It's two pi over six, which actually can be reduced to pi over three. Pi over three. And 90 is how many radians? Pi over 2. So what I'm actually doing, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. 90 degrees, isn't that just 3 times 30? And what's 3 times pi over 6? 3 pi over 6, which can be reduced to pi over 2. So we went from 30, we could jump over the middle line, to 60, to 90. That means this one must be how many degrees? What's 90 plus 30? 120. 120. And then I could jump another 30, skipping over a line, becomes 150. And then all the way to 180. Now, think of this. 45 plus 45 is 90 plus another 45 is 135. Well, that's cool. And then guess what? Now we can still build those triangles. I'll be writing over some of this stuff. We can still make those triangles, but instead of using 120, 135, 150, I'm going to use the reference angle, the leftovers, the stuff that gets you to finish it, okay? So now, going back to that 120, there's my triangle. If I have a 120 degrees, to get to this point, what would it take to get from here back to our to the x-axis? How much more? So it's 60 degrees. So I'm going to use my 30, 60, 90 triangle. And that 30, 60, 90 triangle says that the x part or the bottom should be what length? That's 30 way up there. This should be 1 half. Opposite 60 should be square 3 over 2, and that's 1. But wait, 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 wait. I went backwards on the x. So that's not 1 half, it's negative 1 half. So it's negative 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. I am going up still. Take a look all the way across at that red point over there. It was a positive 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. This one's a negative 1 half 
square root of 3 over 2. They're both based off of 60 degree triangles. They're both in the top half of the hemisphere, or the quadrants, top quadrants. So the y's are positive. But one is on the positive x, the other one's a negative x. Pretty cool, huh? Do the same thing for the next one. If I go a 135 degrees, how much further do I have to go? 45. 45. So we can get this stuff out of here. So we're going to go 45. Right? That's a 1. My other two side lengths are? Square root of 2 over 2. Square root of 2 over 2. Both times, right? But since I'm going backwards in the x direction, it will be negative. negative. So the point that's associated with that is negative square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Now this is interesting, okay? Notice that if we were talking about all students take calculus, sine in the second quadrant is the only one that's positive and it appears to be so far. Your homework for tonight is to finish off the circle using triangles. Don't forget to put your radians in as well. Remember, there's a way, there's a trick to this. If this is 60 and this is 120, isn't that 2 times 60? Which means it also be 2 times pi over 3 or 2 pi over 3. So going back to that first quadrant, everything's based off this information from the first quadrant. That's the key. The first quadrant is directly the, the reference triangles. It's just multiples of that. So your homework is finish that off. Have a great day.